President and the Secretary for organising this meeting. Say no to Mercury wishes to thank the Government of Switzerland for hosting this important event. This is the first time Say No to Mercury takes the floor at COP5. For 12 years, Say No to Mercury has participated actively at this convention, joining other NGOs to champion the cause for a universal phase-out of Mercury Dental Amalgam. The journey thus far has been challenging. This is my testimony to clarify and a realistic perspective for the parties. My dental career began when I was 17 years old in Brisbane, Australia, 40 years ago, in the basement of the university building with no ventilation. I would, with my bare hands, mix liquid mercury and powder alloys of silver and tin and practice putting the amalgam into the plastic model teeth. Later, I would use encapsulated amalgam and implant this mercury alloy into my patient's teeth. The amalgam was soft due to the mercury oozing out. If the amalgam filling broke, I would fail the class because of poor technique when handling this material. Sometimes the patient would swallow a substantial amount of the debris, but this was of no concern because they taught me that amalgam was safe. We would dispose of the plastic capsule and the unused mercury dental amalgam by putting it into the bin. Even today, this remains the same practice by dentists worldwide, except now they wear gloves and a mask. I did not wear any personal protective equipment like masks and gloves while handling mercury dental amalgam at university. Upon graduating from dental school, I worked in the school dental service for two years where I would place mercury dental amalgam into children aged 4 to 12 years of age. Even though glass ionomer cements were available, I was instructed only to use this material for fissure sealants. I became aware of scientific publications from the European Dental Journal that established a relationship between mercury and dental amalgam and congenital disabilities in children. This information is now disclosed in the material safety data sheets of the amalgam manufacturers. I immediately switched to composite resin fillings as this material was readily available 33 years ago and was made by the same company I used to buy my dental amalgam from. Plus, it was not much more expensive than the amalgam capsules. At no stage for the remainder of my dental career was there ever a clinical situation where I wished I could have used mercury dental amalgam. Almost two decades of daily occupational exposure to mercury without wearing effective personal protection equipment has rendered me with mercury poisoning, validated by high levels of mercury in my hair tissue sample. Fortunately, I was appropriately diagnosed and underwent specific mercury detoxification. The second episode of mercury poisoning occurred when I was changing the canister full of dental amalgam waste from the amalgam separated device. A blood test confirmed mercury poisoning. I share my story with you to demonstrate that all the excuses of the contrived need to continue using mercury dental amalgam, such as it's cheap, it's strong, it's inert, it's easy, it lasts longer, it's safe, are not valid. There is no justification for the continued use of this primitive, poisonous, polluting product in modern dentistry. The time is now to say no to mercury and end the mercury age in dentistry.